I thought there would be more wine here. This is a city called Cork in Ireland, and all I see is a lot of, lot of beer. Pretty much in line with the rest of Ireland. But not that much wine. Why is it called Cork? Well, maybe we'll find out on this journey. Let's walk around Cork for the first time. Uh, we're gonna walk around Cork for the first time. I don't know much about this city at all, and um, I'm so excited to show you my first impressions and let me know where your first impressions are just strolling around here at night. I took a very long train journey all the way from Belfast and it's long, not because the island is huge, the island is really not that big, it's because the train systems are actually disconnected uh, from the Northern Ireland part to the Southern Ireland part. Uh, so I had to do a entire crazy transfer. Nonetheless, I'm here and let's walk around. I'm Ariel, this is Urbanist. Let's go to Cork City. Let's go. So let's see what's in Cork City. I don't know too much about the city yet. And you're gonna join me as I'm experiencing it for the first time. Many of you might be experiencing it for the first time as well. Do let me know if you've been to Cork City before. Cork City is in the historic Munster province in County Cork, same name as the city. And we are about two hours and a half away from Dublin. It's a crazy distance away from Dublin, actually. Um, and a lot of people out and about because it's a Friday night. There's a lot of bars around. Michael says lots of wine. Well, I was joking around because cork is uh, what you use to hold the contents of a bottle of wine in the glass is a piece of cork but it's unrelated to the town name. Hey, what happened to FB Live? I'm not sure. Uh, let me know if Facebookers are tuning in right now. Welcome, Laureen. <laughs> Susan says, huh, my hunch was right. Yeah, yeah, it was. What's the crack in cork? I, I don't know yet. Let's see, let's see. Let's see what's the Irish crack, C-R-A-I-C. -C. Facebook is okay, wonderful. Okay, that's awesome to hear. Right now we are in the center area of Cork, uh, the boundaries of the historic city as well. The city was founded in 1185 due to the Anglo-Norman invasions that happened on the island of Ireland. We'll learn a little bit more about that when we explore more of the history on Sunday. However, today we are just wandering around. There's these strange lights here in this like main thoroughfare of Cork that kind of wiggles around between these two rivers. 1185 is young for Ireland, says uh, B. Griffin. You know, you'll be surprised. Ireland, it's a very old country, of course, because of the Neolithic people. But in terms of the cities that we explore, it's among the older of the cities. Ireland wasn't really an urbanized country up until pretty much the past two centuries or so. Hey, Marianne, nice to see you here. Welcome. So let me show you the main area. There's a lot of cars here. So let me actually go around here and show you the back streets. Um, so let's see if we can wiggle around. Hey, Chris, nice to see you here. Chris, thank you so much for the stars. Hey, this is where Michael Collins is from. Every Irish person knows the third Apollo astronaut from Apollo 11 because he shares the same name. Oh, interesting. Hey, Andre from Bucharest. Nice to see you here. Welcome, Andre. Drop up to Malo tomorrow. 
We'll look after you big time, says Jimmy and Mary McSweeney. Hey, thank you so much for the offer. What's in Malo? Let me know. What's in Malo? Wendy, nice to see you here. Hello, B. Griffin. Welcome. Is it much livelier than Dublin? It's a much smaller city. There's 210,000 people here in the city. Um, and it feels a bit more dense. So I think it is a bit more livelier than parts of Dublin. Yeah. But I think once we leave this area, we're not going to see too much life. We're really, really in the, in the center of it all. Cool barbershop over here. Hey, aloha, Janice. Lorraine, thank you so much for 500 stars. There's bubble tea here. Lots of delivery um, people as well. Is Cork the only town in Ireland where they drink wine? No. So, you know, I saw a wine bar before, but no, surprisingly not. Though I hear a lot of American accents. So I think a lot of Americans are expats here. Hey, oh, Lorraine. Thank you so much, I appreciate that. We have a few Lorraines tuning in, thank you so much. Cool old building here. Might have been an old office. Uh, Woodford, Bourne, Bourne and Company. Nice to, nice to see bubble tea thoroughly invaded Ireland. Yeah, it has, uh, B. Griffin. There's, there was a bubble tea place in Kilkenny, which is a very s small city. I, I saw like a few in Waterford. Belfast, I didn't quite have enough time to just stroll around the city. So I don't know about Belfast, but here as well, yeah. Hey, Sylvia, nice to see you here. Hello, Judith, welcome. Greenwich Village vibe? Kind of, it is a very young city. There's a commotion going down down there. This is a very young city. <laughs> I barely see people older than the age of 45 here. There's like some type of commotion going down there. So let's avoid that street. Hey, JK says all night tour. Do they have dominoes? Asked Sir Ronald. I have seen dominoes in Ireland, I think. Yeah, I think I saw one in... I think I saw one in Belfast. Uh, but I, I can't tell you for sure. I don't know at all for sure. Looks a little dangerous. I don't think so. Um, it's, it's more of a... My first impression is this is a super young city. There are areas filled with bars. And then... It's not really a thriving city at night, I think. Uh, not that many shops open. I was shocked that most bookstores were already closed by 6 p.m. I needed to buy something. Uh, and they were shut by 6 p.m. As is, as is the case with most other stores. We're back to the main avenue over here. Sandra says, yes, we have Domino's. Okay, thank you so much. Dorenda, nice to see you here. Hey, welcome. Looks like a clean city. It is a clean city, yeah. It's the second largest city in the Republic of Ireland. Ronald says it could be one of those towns where people never get old. <laughs> yes, I'll accept for wives. Maybe, no, but Ireland in general is a very young country. It is, I think, the youngest country in Western Europe. Should be the one in Western Europe. I, it might be a some in Ireland, but there are a lot of Burger Kings, that's for sure. And I did try a Burger King, and it tasted exactly the same as every other Burger King. Nothing special. Hey, Christine, thank you so much for the 200 stars. Is it expensive here, says Hans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, food is um, pretty much in line with New York prices. You can find food that is a little bit cheaper than New York, but just a bit, just a bit. Um, so pretty much New York prices for food. Lodging is where it's way more expensive than other cities in Europe. Um, I already stay in a few places that are well above $120 per night, even more. 
Uh, so it's way more expensive than Rome, Paris. Um, where else have I stayed? Uh, Helsinki, I've stayed in Helsinki. And a few other cities, way more expensive than those cities. Even more expensive than Venice. <laughs> My hotel rooms were cheaper in Venice than they are in Cork City. <laughs> so yeah, it is an expensive country overall. Looks like any other US city. Well, Christine, as an officer, a good, interesting observation. Do let me know why you think so. I think there's some major differences between this and uh, most major American cities. I hope the stream holds up, says George. Yeah, the reason the streams went down is, I'm not sure what's up with Northern Ireland, but their local service provider were throttling my connection. For people who don't know too much about data, certain cell phone companies, if they see that you're using a lot of data or constant stream of data, uh, for example, maybe streaming a Netflix movie, they start throttling your connection. That means that they lower the speed of your connection. And basically, if you read the fine print of any cell phone contract, maybe a prepaid or recurring contract, you'll always see a little piece saying that they can throttle your connection at so-and-so point. So that's what happened in Northern Ireland. And I really didn't have a workaround because I was only there two days. Is it cold in Cork? Oh yeah, it's cold in Cork. I am chilly right now. And that's why I need a scarf. And if it gets any colder, I might need gloves and a hat as well. Uh, so yeah, it's colder in, in Ireland in October, because today is October 1st, than it is in uh, New York in October. So I was kind of surprised about that. But then it gets a lot colder in New York in the uh, winter time. This is a nice bar. 1793, wow, that's an old bar. Ah, a little statue here. Love the scarf, looks good with the jacket, says Judith. Oh, thank you so much, Judith. Titanic last stop was Cork, says Anne. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Thank you so much for the tidbit, Anne. This is called the Echo Boy. Commemorating 150 years of the Cork Examiner and 100 years of the Evening Echo. The sculpture was unveiled in December 8, 1991 by the Lord Mayor of Cork. Extra, extra, read all about it. Hey, uh, Susie says, I see you wearing a nice Scottish tartan cashmere scarf to keep you cozy. Oh, I can't wait. Can't wait to go to uh, Scotland. Uh, Susie, if you can uh, get in contact with uh, good old Boris and tell him to uh, take away <laughs> the need to have a secondary test after I get into the country. If you can uh, do that for me, I'll be so appreciative. So thank you so much, Susie. Thanks in advance. <laughs> Let's continue walking around. You're visiting Scotland in your travels. No, 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 it's too much of a risk. In terms of uh, you have to take a secondary test to get in to the country. And when taking a secondary test, it, um, you run at the risk of a false positive. And if you get a false positive, you're stuck in quarantine for 10 to 14 days. And that means I have to spend hotel 14 days without, need, without going out. So it is a big financial risk. Have a pint of Murphy Stout. Oh, Bernard, Murphy's from here, interesting. Thank you, Bernard. Maybe I'll try it at some point. Will you be staying in Ireland for Halloween? No, no, I'm only here through mid-October. Reminds me of London's West End. Right, McCauley's, yeah, there's a little bit of a London feel to this. So the long history of Cork actually was very aligned with England for most of its long history in terms of its culture. 
Christine says, I'm so tired of the pandemic. It sucks. Yeah, I agree. Me too. I'm tired of the pandemic. Wow, these, these lights take long. Sil says, uh, we looked for Sullivan beer, but couldn't find it. Sil, where are you based? I think that on, can only be found in New York, in, um, here in uh, Ireland. Wendy says, I'm scared. Yeah, there was a group of guys that were trying to cross the street before the light went off. But a huge bus passed by. Almost ran him over. Yes, come to Edinburgh this summer for our long nights and for the Fringe Festival. Oh yeah, Edinburgh has the Fringe Festival, one of the bigger ones. Uh, and that's in the summertime. Oh, that's awesome to hear. Oh, they crossed the road when red. Yeah, I didn't want to point the camera at them, but, um, but yeah. A group of young guys tried to cross the road when red, one of the buses almost hit them. Whiskey recommendation says Renee, Riders, Tears, and Bushmills. Yeah, Bushmills. Bushmills from Northern Ireland. Uh, I pass by the distillery when I was driving with Darren. But there's a local brewer here. I think it's uh, Jameson. They have an entire brewery tour. Hello, Mater and Nader. Nice to see you, Mater and Nader. Nice to see you here. Welcome. I found my hat <laughs> for these cold Irish nights on coming back <laughs> when they open at a reasonable time. <laughs> hey, uh, Janina says, uh, how long do you stay in Ireland? Through mid-October, I'm staying in Ireland. So I got almost two weeks left, a little bit less than two weeks left. So enjoy now, ladies and gentlemen. Take it in. Take in all the sights. Take in every single sight. It's a Halloween store. Don't worry, everyone. So it's just a Halloween store. Oh yeah, philosophical check. Oh yeah, yeah. Today is the first Friday of the month. It's so soon. Did not anticipate that. I'll keep you posted, everyone. Can we, get, can we still get postcards from Ireland? Yes, in uh, mega urbanists get a postcard once per month. Um, so some urbanists might get a postcard from New York or they might get it one from Ireland. But if you are becoming a new mega urbanist, I'll be sure to give you an Ireland one. So sign up to become a mega urbanist. That's $20 a month or more on patreon.com slash urbanist or um, YouTube memberships, press that mega urbanist button uh, when you press that join button and you'll get a Ireland one if you become a member within these say 10 days, 10 days you gotta become a member, you'll receive a Ireland one. Marianne says, after watching Ariel drink so much Guinness, I had to drink some myself. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so here we are in another street. Cool. We have reached another street. In a place called Hibernian Bar. That's the ancient name from the Romans given to the island of Ireland. Hibernia. Do you go to the Guinness storehouse when you were in Dublin, says Oliver. Yes. Full, in-depth tour. Hey, Kumar, nice to see you here. Nice evening walk. Oh, yeah. Se bebe más té que café en Irlanda, as Manny. Uh, Manny asks, do they drink more tea than coffee? In la casa, 
es todavía una cultura de té. So, y tú invitas a alguien a la casa, te dan el té. Um, pero, y tú vas afuera, para mí se aparece, especialmente las personas más jóvenes, que es una cultura de café. So, en la casa es té y afuera es café. So it, it appears to me that at home, it's still a culture of drinking tea, young and old, but from what I've seen, the younger crowds especially go out for coffee. I don't see too many people going out for tea. I barely see tea shops. And empty alleyways. Do you think they celebrate Halloween in Ireland? Says Sil. Yeah, they do. They do so. Uh, Sahwin. Sahwin comes from, is the origin of Ireland, uh, origin of Halloween that comes from Ireland, brought over by the Irish immigrants. And though they don't celebrate the same way as Americans do because it's Americans that invented the holiday of Halloween to be one for dressing up and eating out candy and things like that and making pumpkin jack-o'-lanterns. Apparently, from my spoken with a few Irish residents, they said that they have picked up the American traditions of dressing up. The jack-o'-lantern tradition actually originated with turnips as opposed to pumpkins. So just Google search turnip lanterns and you you won't sleep. <laughs> you might never look at a turnip the same again. Turnips are scary when you make them into jack-o'-lanterns. Don't, don't didn't stay in Dublin long says Wendy. I stayed in Dublin almost a month. Hey, Kumar. Yes, I'm streaming to multiple platforms at the same time. So I'm streaming to FB, YT, and TW. Hey, Janina says, I, I love your channel. I plan to visit Ireland. Oh, I'm so glad. That's so awesome to hear. Macaulay says, don't do it. I made that mistake of staying in Dublin. Yeah, yeah. So. I've already been here for two weeks in Ireland. I'm loving it. Beautiful country. <laughs> this country is more about seeing outside the city. There's some countries like Italy that you will be perfectly content seeing all the beautiful cities and towns. But here it's more about going out. Out and about into the countryside. Someone's playing music. Someone's playing some live music. Oh my god, Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, I love this.
Wow, that was a great, great cover of of uh, Dark Side of the Moon. Ooh, was that great gig in the sky? Do let me know. It's from the album, definitely. Amazing, great music. Ireland being the city of music. That's one great thing about the cities is you'll find a lot of great music all around. Hey Zito, this is you. Judah says, Ariel, you're always smiling. Indeed I am. <laughs> Indeed I am. <laughs> I kind of don't want to leave, this is great music. I wish, it's tough with these bars because going inside a bar to grab drinks, there's always no service. I'll go back through here. I should have known. I come back here. That was so cool. That was great. Uh, it all says, I wonder if the pubs have an Irish version of How I Met Your Mother. So How I Met Your Mother in New York takes place in a Irish pub, Irish American pub. Um, so yeah, they do have the same look, a lot of these pubs here in Ireland. Um, so if you've been to a pub in the US, almost the same, same style. Though the ambiance is different because pubs in the US sometimes could be a lot older crowd, usually just men, but here you have a lot more varied people inside of the pub. Oh, more buskers. Nice. Any food tours, says uh, Anne. You know, I was, I was doing some thinking on that, about food here. So I was thinking about uh, food coverage and on live video, it's a bit challenging for a few reasons. One, I've had some great food here, but the restaurants tend to have no cell phone service, similar to what I experienced in Italy, or very bad cell phone service. And there's not that much outdoor seating. I see more outdoor seating here, uh, but it's sometimes very loud and, uh, and kind of, uh, hectic to, to film. And then the second challenge is, you know, Ireland, I think once I show you a few of the classic meals, you kind of get the gist. I can't really compare too many Irish stews or too many um, lamb shanks. <laughs> you kind of get the gist with uh, those meals. There's not too much differentiation in them. It's like going to Paris and try to compare croissants. After a while, you kind of get the idea. It's a croissant. So that's why it's a bit, it's a bit difficult um, because there's a lot of food, but there's a, it's like more varied food uh, from different areas of the world, but it's hard to kind of show in live video because no service or it's hectic because tight spaces. All right, let's continue walking around. McCulley's, uh, Kay, uh, McCulley says Kay had the best cooking. Yes. So if you want to see food, I think the best food videos I have done on this trip is the ones at Kay's Kitchen. I think that's a great way to experience food here in Ireland. Are you going to County Clare, says Shooting the Stars. I passed County Clare previously already. I showed the Cliffs of Moher. Oh wow, 
this is where a uh, coffee shop opened late over here. Shooting the breeze says, I live near the cliffs myself. Oh, cool. That's awesome. Let's see, what, what is this over here? These random gateways. Harry L, I just sent you a PayPal. I'm really enjoying Ireland. Hey, uh, Loreen. Huge round of hearts to Loreen. Loreen is a very kind contributor um, and has already given a few big, big contributions for this Irish trip alone. Not to even mention all the ones beforehand. So huge round of hearts to Loreen. Thank you so much, Loreen. Are you getting your usual amount of coffee, says Susie? It's a great question, Susie. I'm drinking more coffee here than I ever have. And it's weird because well, Ireland has great coffee in a lot of places. But I just felt more of the need to drink more coffee. It's, I'm not used to super cloudy weather all the time. You know, growing up, in New, uh, growing up in New York or being in New York, you have those very beautiful sunny days. But here you get a lot more cloudiness and a lot more rain. Um, so... I have felt a little bit of dip in energy because I'm not used to this type of weather all the time. And I've been drinking about three Americanos a day, which is about six shots of espresso. So yeah, I've been having a lot of coffee here. And coffee here is really, really good. There's a lot of great coffee shops almost every place I've been to here in Ireland. It has to do with the weather, says uh, Judith. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for the nice comments on my cooking, says Kay. Yeah, Kay. Kay deserves it. Uh, let's walk this way. Wow, so many groups of young kids. Uh, hey, you know, after hanging out in cities where the population is much older, it feels such a, like, a stark difference coming to a very young country. Shooting the Breeze says, don't walk down there. <laughs> I'm getting that vibe, Shooting the Breeze. Let's peek. Definitely getting that vibe. Yeah, a lot of people hanging out and smoking. Is Ireland different from what you expect? This is Hans Christian. Great question, Hans Christian. It's better than I expected in many respects. Let's uh, walk over here to the this huge uh, tower thingy. It's better than I expected. Because I... I've never really been a nature person. I've never been the person who really likes um, exploring countryside. Because in America, countryside can get rather boring. Uh, at least from my experience so far. Maybe I'll give it another chance in the future. But after going to Italy, and some parts of Greece, and seeing the beautiful countrysides in those areas of the world, especially the Tuscan countryside, it blew me away so much that I didn't think Ireland could possibly compete with the beauty, with the serenity of Tuscany. But it does. It does in a very different way that Tuscany countryside cannot do Over here, it is amongst the greenest landscapes I've ever seen in my entire life. The grass has so many shades of green. As I mentioned, the Irish sunset has 50 shades of gray. Well, the grass has 50 shades of green. And, oh, they are gorgeous. i shown a bit of it. See my show on the Cliffs of Moher, the one I did the, uh, two days ago or yesterday. Well, time has flown by. But the one I did yesterday of um, the Giant's Causeway, I've done a few others. And tomorrow, stay tuned. Tomorrow, no scheduled live video. I'll be doing a few mini live videos in the countryside again, starting around 1 p.m. Ireland time. So 
I've had those kind of um, experiences. Hey, how's it going? Hey. <laughs> Kill on Instagram. Get back to me. Keep it real, boys. Awesome. Where are you guys from? Cork. Cork. What's the best thing in Cork, Limerick. in your opinion? Oh, uh, I'd, I'd say I'd say yeah. strip clubs, like. Up Limerick. <laughs> strip clubs, <Fuck> okay. <laughs> awesome, guys. Are you famous? How are you, brother? I have about a few hundred people tuning in right now. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. Oh, I explore cities, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we have people from all around the world. New York. Oh, welcome uh -huh. back. Yeah, yeah, exploring the island. Better crack. Yeah, all right. Fuck Definitely fuck will. We got bad about it. Okay, all right, guys. Buddy. Have a good day. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Come on, Jimmy Dogan. <laughs> all right. <laughs> there we go. Limerick is the recommendation. But yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it, Ireland has immense, beautiful landscapes. I really recommend it. Uh, in terms of the city, I'll walk around a little bit more. But in terms of the city, I. The cities I had low expectations, and um, they really kind of haven't exceeded that or lessened that. Pretty much what I expected from the cities. It feels a lot like Boston, a lot of these places. It feels like parts of Brooklyn. Uh, you get that vibe, and it's nice. Very beautiful cities. What I'm surprised is by the food quality and the coffee quality. Ooh, great coffee quality here. So look at that. I don't know what that column is, but we'll find out on Sunday. Let me show you the river. Let's go to the river, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Gary says Ariel has his, uh, his coat and scarf on. The local lads have their polo shirts. Indeed, indeed they do. I, I like being cozy. Oh, this is nice. The River Lee. Thank you so much, Shooting the Breeze. Are you a Cork native? Hey, we got a super chat. Hey, Mighty Bull, shout out from New York. Did you encounter any underage gangs in uh, Ireland? No, I have not seen uh, gang activity. In Belfast, I briefly saw uh, kids throwing stones at each other. <laughs> but look at that. This is a nice view. That's a nice church. We'll find out about that on Sunday. Stay tuned. Wendy says romantic. Yeah, great photo opportunity. The boggy areas of which there are many go a brown color this time of year. Still beautiful though, says Gallo. Oh, cool. Where to next? Cork is much like Dublin. Nothing special, says Pat. The people are special in the music, but not the cities. Yeah, that's why I'm going to do a day trip tomorrow. Stay tuned. Tomorrow, I'm going to a far, far away place. A savage land. A land of myth and legends. Of fairies and wild Atlantic breezes. Stay tuned tomorrow. Guy says, what has impressed me most about Ireland? The countryside. Everywhere it is green. The greenest I've ever seen. This one would be nice if that tower was lit up. It would be so perfectly centered. All right, I'm not sure if there's much here on this side. It might be. All right, let's explore down that road. It looks nice. Is it Edinburgh? Says Susie. What are you referring to, Susie? Oh, next city? Oh, you'll find out. Oh, tomorrow? No, tomorrow's countryside of Ireland. <laughs> 1 p.m. Ireland, give or take. I can't give you a set schedule because I'm going on a bus tour. Go Donegal. You know, I would love to go to Donegal. I just don't have a car. Oh, where should I go? Let's go this way. All right, we'll walk down this to this bridge. Let's see what's up over here. Lorraine says, I'm a hop, jump, and skip away from Scotland. Yes, and I so wish I could go. I got freelance commitments I'm working on something very special that might be really cool for many tourists going to New York in the upcoming years stay tuned for that and then uh, beyond that as I mentioned Scotland tricky can't go in oh wow this is a very shallow river 
Very shallow. <laughs> Shooting recess is down uh, towards the bus station. Yeah, I think I think uh, we've seen a lot. Shooting the breeze. Let me know if uh, if there are any other lively areas in uh, Cork that you would recommend. The surrounding areas of Cork are interesting, like Blarney and the forts in Cork Harbor. Oh yeah, I gotta find out if those are accessible via public transportation. And if they are, I'll go to them. All right, let's go over here. Hey Ariel, get your thumb out and flash a bit of leg to hitch a ride. <laughs> <laughs> Over to Donegal. <laughs> That's funny, Gary. Scotland requires special testing. Yes, indeed it does. That's why I can't. It is not within my budget to go at the moment. All right, we're going uphill now. That's high town. What's your favorite experience in Ireland so far? It says Little Mall. Ooh, great question. Hmm. Oh no. I have to think about that. Um, seeing the cliffs of Moher was really mind blowing. Nice little Irish pub. Oh, show. Oh, show. Tea and spirit. This is a cool little photo opportunity. Nicely framed. Any good Mexican food in Ireland? You know, there's a few burrito bars here. I think you love Galway for its vibes, says Pat. Stay tuned, Pat. Stay tuned. Let's uh, cross the street. That Oregon Cliff synchronicity, oh my god, all the way, says Wendy. Ooh, what are you referring to, Wendy? Do let me know. And says Belfast Marathon on tomorrow. Oh, are you seeing the Belfast videos you're referring to, Anne? Enjoy them, yeah. <laughs> They're really fun. And I have a few more short videos to come up. see too much here. It's pretty empty. What's the most New York City thing you've seen here? I today just passed by a place called Five Points that sells bagels, uh, which is probably the most New York thing I've seen thus far. Oh, and the river ends right here. Have I ever ran the marathon, says Pat. No, I have not. Not ran the marathon. Okay, so today, tonight, is the first Friday of the month. And I always do a philosophical chat. So let me know if you want to see a philosophical chat tonight. Um... I can potentially do one in about 40, 50 minutes or so. So let me know if you want to see a philosophical chat tonight. I did not plan it because I did not realize today was the first Friday of the month. And uh, we'll end here. Um, I'm not sure what more I can show you here at night, but I'm sure we're going to find a lot of things to see at the daytime, uh, especially when it comes to major landmarks. So stay tuned, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in into this live video exploration of cork <laughs> at night uh, <laughs> um, people were trying to pass uh, this live exploration of cork at night uh, my first impressions of cork is it is nice um i don't feel too enthused <laughs> 
Um, I don't feel too enthused. So that's my first impression. I'm not that enthused. Uh, but I, can, I, I do like the lively nature of it. It seems like a lot of young people are around. And um, it seems like during the day, daytime, there's probably a lot of good coffee shops around because we passed a few of them that were closed. So everyone, stay tuned. A lot of people have voted yes for a philosophical chat. I'll be live in a little bit, about 40, uh, 40 minutes or so. And also, tomorrow, I'll be doing mini live videos throughout the day. And I'll be back 4 p.m. Sunday to explore the history of Cork. Keep being awesome and always keep on exploring. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.